In 1933, James Wales' The Invisible Man showed up in the cinema. The US production had a budget of $300,000. It was a worldwide success with the audiences and critics and is rightly considered a cult movie. The film is based on the fifth novel by H.G. Wells, The Invisible Man from 1897. The science fiction classic is about a scientist who successfully creates an invisibility serum and ejects himself, but fails in the creation of an antidote. As a moral tale, The Invisible Man can be seen as a modern version of the Ring of Geekers parable by Plato, which raises the question of how morally someone will remain when he has the power to make himself invisible, in that case with a ring, so he can't be prosecuted. However, this question does not arise in the novel at all, since the protagonist is from the very beginning ruthless, and in the movie it is the serum which spreads as a side effect madness and causes his actions. Snowy night, a mysterious stranger named Griffin, his face hidden in bandages, takes a room at the Lion's Head Inn. He has invented an invisibility serum and he has tried it on himself. The problem, however, that Griffin has not found a means to reserve the effect and therefore he would like to work on it in peace in his room. His outspoken appearance arouses attention. He reveals his secret to escape and kills a policeman in the process. Also, the serum has a side effect of making people evil and crazy. The film is a masterpiece in every aspect, an amazing story, a very good cast and spectacular effects. It is almost the prototype of the Mad Scientist movie. Here we have already the biggest differences to the original, which lays at the end of the 19th century and in which the protagonist is evil from the get-go and has neither a fiancé nor a family. From 1940 to 1951, five continuations were made, of which none can keep up with the first one, and also have little in common with the novel. The 
Companies are quite obviously trying to follow their respective trends. They only shine through their impressive effects at the time, but with the partially silly stories they cannot really convince today. In The Invisible Man Returns from 1940, the Invisible Man of course does not return. After all, he died in the last part and is not called Patty. A scientist is wrongly convicted of murder and gets help from Griffins, conveniently pulled out of the ass, uh, I mean, out of the script brother, who is of course also a scientist and also of course in possession of the serum. After his prison break, he takes revenge on the true perpetrator and conveniently becomes visible again thanks to a blood transfusion. Wow. The Invisible Woman from the same year is a volunteer test subject in an unfunny comedy in which a professor sponsored by a rich playboy makes her temporarily invisible by means of a machine and also the serum. After her reappearance, she finds out that for reasons Bruce also makes her temporarily invisible. Beats up some gangster wannabes, marries of course the rich playboy and gets a baby in time for the final gag scene matching perfectly the previous so-called comedy from Grandpa's joke collection. Invisible Agent from 1942 is set during World War II and is supposedly the grandson of Griffin, which makes as much sense as the timeline in the Mummy movies. In order to serve his country, he decides to become an agent, jumps out of a plane and walks around naked and invisible in Nazi Germany. More interesting than this naive nonsense itself, which was obviously written by a five-year-old, is the fact that on IMDb he is supposedly banned here in Germany, but had also, according to the same page, German TV premiere in 1986. In 1944, the Invisible Man takes revenge on businessmen who allegedly cheated him. He uses the serum of a befriended scientist and needs regularly blood transfusions to become temporarily visible again. The Invisible Vampire aka this one really sucks is also named Griffin, but there is no connection to his predecessors, not even to part one. In 1951, the Invisible Man meets Abbott and Costello. After he had already a short cameo three years earlier in the comedy duo's best film of the series about famous universal monsters, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. In this well-made parody, a wrongly accused boxer tries to prove his innocence by using the serum and for this he needs the help of the detective rookies Abbott and Costello. In 1958, the British television series The Invisible Man appears with 26 episodes. In the harmless series, a scientist got invisible by accident and is looking for an antidote. He works together with the government and also experiences private adventures. In 1975, The Invisible Man is a 13-part US series, which has little to do with the novel. She has quite nice effects for the 70s and gets, after a serious pilot, the episodes more funny, until she was cancelled after the first season due to low ratings.
1976, the US series Gemini Man was released with 12 episodes. This is about an agent who can be invisible for 15 minutes just by pushing a button, and his clothes also disappear. The thing was cancelled in the US as a 5 episodes and has a high trash entertainment value thanks to awful scripts and cheap effects. In 1984, The Invisible Man came as a very interesting British TV series with six parts at 30 minutes. It is well cast and the effects are quite okay for the time, but the fact that it is so faithful to the novel was perceived by some viewers as a problem, because the book is not suitable for the series format and the pace is too slow.